what's up welcome back here to another edition of intuitive angling and man i really appreciate you guys watching the video and supporting the channel and uh, like uh, to invite everybody out there that hadn't had a chance to subscribe to intuitive angling to please do so and hit that like button if you like the video here guys today we're going to be talking about how common cheating is in bass tournaments and uh, how pre prevalent and if it's a deal or if it's not a deal uh, this has gotten a lot of attention over the past couple of years with the advent of the big walleye cheating scandal earlier this year so we're going to get into that in today's video so real quick before we get started guys just a couple quick housekeeping tips just want to invite everybody out there anyone interested in booking an on the water lesson with me you can do that by going to my facebook page randy block at professional angler and shoot me a private message and also please check out our fish the moment virtual lessons you can also book a one hour zoom call with me to go over any questions you have in fishing or uh, any talk about any technique or whatever and i'll put the link in the description for that so much appreciated okay guys let's talk about this cheating deal a little bit um ever since i've been fishing tournaments um it's it's been a thing i mean it's been ever since you know uh, fishing tournaments have started i think that's sort of like uh, th that's pretty much a natural byproduct product of any competitive sport but in bass fishing it's a little bit different because um there's a lot of rules, in my opinion, that exist in bass fishing that don't have any business being there. There's a lot of gray areas, and um, there's a lot of uh, things that people get by with that uh, maybe, you know, should be rules for disqualifying qualification in terms of cheating with that. So I think that one of the things, in my opinion, from my experience in fishing bass tournaments for all these years, is there's different levels of what you classify as cheating and in my opinion the levels of cheating have to do with the maliciousness involved in what that particular action is because I'll say right off the bat every single bass angler that has ever fished has cheated in a tournament if you want to get petty about it because take for example the rule on life jackets it says something about Every angler must have a Coast Guard approved jacket that is fully buttoned and zipped up, kill switch on at all times. Guys, I see people all the time that don't have their jacket fully zipped up. I see people that have inflatables that are expired. Everybody out there has forgot to hook their kill switch up once in a while when they've idled across a cove. There's a lot of stuff like that that um, th th those are rules that are broken but they get overlooked because it's it's sort of a dick move to disqualify somebody for that. And then you've got on the opposite, opposite end of the spectrum about people, you know, putting weights in fish like we've talked about with the walleye thing and everything in between. So um, here is sort of my theory on the thing. When you're talking about hardcore cheating, and that's the point of this video here, because in my opinion, and I'll talk about here in a little bit, there's a lot of things that are would be considered breaking rules slash cheating. So I guess if you're breaking a rule, you're cheating. I don't. There's like a gray area there, but um, the the cheating, the hardcore cheating, involves intentious intentionally trying to deceive and try trying to do things that are borderline illegal or are illegal to alter the outcome in a tournament. And for the most part, that has to do with, um, uh, you know, trying to trying to catch fish before the tournament starts or trying to put weights in the fish out there. And there's been all type of contraptions made where people have tried to, you know, put fish in baskets or whatever or on lines and get them later. There's been a ton of that type of stuff. And I'm sure there's been a lot of people get away with it. And a lot of people or some people have gotten caught with that. Um, so that type of cheating, I think, is pretty dang rare. I don't think that you see that very, very often because in the the competition we have now in like the Pro-Am events, it's pretty dang difficult for somebody to to do that without getting picked up on or somebody, you know, catching on to what's going on. It has happened. There has been people that have figured out how to cheat with other people in the boat and they've gotten caught from doing that, but there's people that you know probably have get, have gotten away with it. I think that what you probably have is that cheating is a lot more prevalent prevalent in smaller events. 
you know, the buddy tournaments, the tournaments that don't have polygraphs, smaller events like that. I would say that the cheating is, is a lot more common in something like, in something like that. And it really, until that, until you have some deterrent and a polygraph test is a deterrent, but it's not a deterrent to a hardcore cheater. Every single tournament, if they don't have that, they're opening themselves up to that a little bit because it's it's not it's expensive to give a polygraph test, and polygraph tests aren't admissible in, in court. And polygraph tests can be they, they can give false results. They can they can say that somebody's cheating when they're not, and somebody that's cheating can pass a polygraph test. I mean, I the, I I've I've had to take two polygraph tests in my career at tournaments, and the last one was at a at the FLW tournament at Lake Gunnersville out there, and um, when you when you're when you get strapped into this polygraph like when they put in there they had like the all the different sensors on my fingers and sensors around my chest and stomach out there that's intimidating when you got some you're it's like you're being interrogated and you start thinking in your mind it's like okay did i do anything that was against the rules i'm that you're thinking about that so everybody's automatically nervous you know i passed both of mine fine but i can understand how there's some people out there that they get so there's some they build up so much anxiety that they could give a false test so and then there's people out there that i guarantee guys i know guys in tournaments and i've had guys tell me about they've known guys that have definitely passed polygraph tests that had definitely cheated in tournaments so polygraph tests are not a good deterrent and they're not a good you know uh, measure as far as you know keeping people from or 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 effectively come having the outcome told correctly with that so here is sort of my opinion on the thing out there first of all we need to get rid of so many different rules out there that get people disqualified or or say they're slash cheating now let's say for example if you um if you accidentally run a no wake area it happens to everybody guys i've done it everybody i know has done it where you weren't looking and or something you were caught off guard or there wasn't whatever you weren't paying attention and you accidentally ran or went through a no wake zone a little bit too fast or on plane there was 99 percent of the time there was no malicious intent with that and if you do that you should not get slapped with a disqualification the thing that I think what needs to happen in a lot of these tournaments where, where there's rule violations that that wind up getting people disqualified is get, just give them a, a, a fine. Give them a monetary fine. That is a deterrent. Guarantee it with that. It is a big deterrent because let's say, for example, some guy accidentally has six fish in his live well instead of his, his limit. Accidental mistake. It's just accidental. Why do you want, okay, let, let's run this scenario by here. Let's say that you, you're in a big tournament and you've spent $5,000 to get in this tournament and you've, you've worked your butt off to save to get this tournament and you're, your family sacrifices, you're away from home, you've got a lot on the line and you go to a tournament and you're catching them really good and for whatever reason you, you, get a, you have a mental lapse and you've got six fish in your live well instead of a limit. Now, in a lot of tournaments out there, you're either going to get disqualified for that, or you're going to get, you're going to have to call call in, and you're going to get some type of severe penalty out there for an honest mistake. You're not trying to weigh in six fish. You're going to get caught with six fish at the weigh-in. Instead of kicking some guy in the nuts over that unnecessarily, just give him a $500 fine. It's going to keep people are not going to do that to, to have to cough up $500. Yeah, and then you don't ruin their entire tournament. That's the whole thing about that. And there's a lot of rules out there that have no business being in place. Let's say, for example, now I use this analogy a lot about Pete. It is against the rules, considered cheating or against the rules or whatever. If I say, for example, I'm in the back of a creek and it's real shallow, and I know if I go another hundred yards, the creek gets deeper, but I can't get my boat in there unless I get out of the water. Why is it illegal for me to get out of the water in a foot of water, tie a rope around my waist, and drag my boat over a 50-yard mud flat to get in a deeper side? That is illegal, but it's legal for some dude, if he wants to put $200,000 worth of electronics on his boat, and the next guy can't afford to have a 5-inch flasher on there, or 5-inch 
2D sonar unit, that's perfectly legal, but it's not legal for me to get out of the boat and pull my boat over a mud flat. There's rules that have no business being there. And th that is the problem I have with a lot of tournament rules is there's a lot of rules that unfairly penalize certain people and reward other people for different types of stuff out there. But overall, guys, I, I think that intentional malicious cheating is pretty rare in a tournament. It doesn't happen very often, especially in the draw type tournaments out there. I think there's enough pressure on people as far as getting caught and, and the, uh, uh, the embarrassment and the, and the legal ramifications that come with that to keep most people out of it. But um, ultimately what happens is I think a lot of people, a lot of these people that you read about that get caught cheating, I think it's a matter of just they got greedy. There's, there's been so many situations about people that I have read about that got cheating in tournament, that caught cheating in tournaments, basically because they, they do it, they're like habitual cheaters, like a habitual shoplifter or something. Eventually they're going to get caught. And, um, it's, it really gives the sport a bad eye because every time it, we, there's already enough, um, public opposition to sport fishing for a lot of different reasons out there that every time somebody gets caught cheating, it sort of undermines the integrity of sport of the sport a little bit. So if we would put rules in place out there that don't penalize people for these, um, unintentional acts that do not involve maliciousness behind them. I think that that would be a lot better off for the sport and then, um, try to come up with some type of a situation just to make it more and more difficult for people to cheat. And, uh, there's always going to be the evil genius out there, man. There's always going to be some dude out there that can figure out how to do something illegal. I mean, if you figure there's dudes that can escape from, you know, prisons across the country, they can definitely figure out how to cheat in a tournament that's just sort of like you know part of human nature out there but overall i don't think there's a big problem with it i don't think the problem exists the, the problem that i do think exists in this tournament more than cheating is rules that are in place that have no business being there and penalties for those rules that do not fit the violation there's a lot of penalties out there that are too severe for the violation of just making a common honest mistake. Common honest mistakes should not be penalized by things that ruin somebody's tournament. Like I said, financial penalty is plenty enough, keeps the person in the tournament, doesn't ruin their day, their year, their possibly their career, you know, just by an honest mistake like that. And um, people shouldn't be penalized to that extent for stuff, but obviously people should be penalized when you're dealing with that maliciousness. Uh, that comes from um, certain levels of cheating out there. So anyway, guys, uh, let me know what you guys think about that. We'll talk later.